AMD is about to drop a huge surprise with this GPU. But before I get to that, Nvidia just handed out some free performance with one issue, a better Battlemage GPU, and Intel is about to make their worst mistake yet. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Every day, thousands of viewers watch Gamer Melt and don't subscribe. These four videos work tirelessly to bring you the latest in PC hardware news, but 65% of you just leave, like ghosts in the algorithm. But you can change that for the price of absolutely nothing. You can subscribe today and give a video a loving home in your feed. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Nvidia recently released a new driver update that was made to fix multiple issues with their newest RTX 50 series cards. Like the black screen issues that I went over a while back, freezes, crashing, all of that but it also gives out more performance. Though you may wanna hold off on picking this particular driver up, but I'll get to that in a minute. Either way, as you can see right down here, it says the latest addition to the NVIDIA R570 branch of GPU drivers, the 576.02, has resolved many stability problems troubling RTX GPUs for the past three months, including crashes and black screens. Adding to the mix is increased synthetic performance, as reported by Computerbase, whose data suggests an up to 8% performance bump in 3 d Mark Steel Nomad. And some other 3 d Mark scores showed less of a performance jump. I mean, it was up to 8% performance overall. Now, I do, of course, want to mention that these are synthetic benchmarks, but that doesn't at all mean that this performance jump is just in synthetic benchmarks. It absolutely can be in real world benchmarks as well. But uh, computer base likely just tested this in 3D Mark because it's obviously very easy to do, very easy to compare it to other GPUs, things like that, just to see if it did in fact get a performance jump. And now that they found out that it does, there will likely be more tests done to see if we also see this same performance jump or anywhere near it in real world games. Either way, this is definitely great news, but like I said, there is a caveat. And that's because some users are now reporting temperature sensor bug issues with the new driver. You can see right here that the GeForce 576.02 driver update released to address black screen and stability problems may still cause issues. Some users are reporting that GPU temperature readings are incorrect, which can lead to wrong clock speeds and voltages being applied. That's definitely not good. It says the issue seems tied to this API interface, which can become stuck at a fixed value. So yeah, if you do want to risk this potential pretty major issue, I will say you can update, but if I were you, I'd likely wait just to see, unless you're having major issues with your current driver. But obviously if you do update, you do want to look out for this just because if it thinks, let's say that it thinks that the temps are much lower than what they actually are, it could overclock it higher and ultimately damage the GPU. Now, I don't think there's been any reports of that or anything like that. And we're also talking things like voltages, stuff like that would also likely have to increase, but still, it doesn't look good. It's pretty wild just how bad Nvidia's newest drivers have been for their new GPUs. And next up for today, it looks like Intel isn't done with their Battlemage GPUs just yet. In fact, it looks like they could be gearing up to release an even more powerful card. As you can see right down here, this originally comes from a shipping manifest, which revealed a new GPU, specifically the BGM G31 GPU. And as it states, this is likely a higher end version compared to the G21 GPU, obviously given the name, that's used used in the ARC B580 card. Now, I will state that it mentions that this manifest is for research and development purposes, so it's obviously not a final product, but according to the well-known leaker Raichu, he states that while there is a lot of discussion about the B770 being dead, he thinks that it will actually be coming in the future meaning this very well could be a B770 GPU, which of course is more powerful than their current B580, but rumors had really been circulating that the 
GB was basically done. Intel wasn't, in fact, set to release it. But at least according to this, it definitely looks like it may, in fact, be coming. And next up, you know, the new 12E 2x6 connector has been lighting up the internet. And not in a good way. But instead of running from the flames that engulf your computer, I figured, why not embrace it? So forget RTX ray tracing. This is FTX flame tracing. We didn't just get AI frame generation with these new GPUs, but real time fire simulation right inside your case. Luckily, this t-shirt won't set your house on fire. In fact, besides the soft fabric, this is what any true PC enthusiast should wear while watching their investment combust in style. It's breathable, comfy, and actually built to last. And you can get it right now at meldstore.com. That's M-E-L-D store.com. Or visit the link in the description below. And remember, don't let your GPU be the hottest thing in the room. Just just let your new shirt do the talking. And next up, I really don't know what Intel is doing here. The company has been getting just completely crushed left and right by AMD, by NVIDIA, that just things have really not been going well for the company. And in light of all this, it looks like their next generation of CPUs are going to require a new motherboard. <laughs> As you can see right down here, it says a recent leak originating from, once again, a shipping manifest, suggests that Intel may have never intended to support Nova Lake S, which is a successor to Arrow Lake S, on the LGA 1851 socket. And don't forget that this socket, as well as the 800 series motherboards, were initially released with Arrow Lake S. Meaning, if this is correct, it looks like these motherboards will only last for a single generation. Now, there have been some rumors about a refreshed Arrow Lake series, but even then, we're only talking two generations of CPUs on this same platform. And don't get me wrong, there almost certainly would have been a new series of motherboards, pretty much everyone expects that, but because this is a new socket, the LGA 1954 socket, it means that these new CPUs will require a new motherboard. Obviously, with AMD's AM5 series, they often release new motherboards as well, but they typically try to add support for the newer series CPUs on the older generation motherboards. They just have, you know, new features, stuff like that on the newer ones. And obviously, if you want those, you will have to upgrade. But if you just want the new CPU and are fine with your current motherboard, you won't have to. But in stark contrast to that, Intel, yet again, looks set to release a new socket pretty much right after their last socket was released. You can see that it was released in Q3 of 2024. Basically, Intel, what are you thinking? And lastly for today, we have new information on what looks to be AMD's best GPU yet. Not necessarily in terms of performance, but well, Let's just go over it. As you can see right down here, it says in the next couple of weeks, AMD will reveal details about two Radeon RX 9000 graphics cards, the RX 9060 XT and the 9070 GRE. And it's that 9070 GRE that we just got new information on specs. So starting things off, as you can see, when it comes to cores, it comes with 3072, which is a bit of a drop from the 9070, but it gets a much larger boost clock at 2.79 gigahertz. And actually it gets even better because as they state right here, it says some custom variants we know of will approach a three gigahertz boost clock, making this even faster than the 9070 XT. And of course, when we saw the regular 9070 get much higher boost clocks, it was able to get right around the performance of the 9070 XT, though obviously this does have less cores, but essentially what this shows me is that it'll potentially with this higher boost clock get right around the performance of the regular 9070. Now, there is one caveat and that is memory. The issue is that the 9070 GRE looks to come with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 while the 9060 XT, this is looking like a similar problem that Nvidia has, will come with 
either eight gigabytes, okay, that makes sense, or 16. So you do end up having to decide, okay, which one do I want, 12 gigabytes or 16 with a little bit less performance? I don't know, well, I say a little bit, but one thing to notice is that we are talking 3,072 cores versus 2,048. So that is a pretty big difference. Either way, when it comes to the memory bus, we're looking at 192 bits with memory speeds at 18 gigabits per second. And there is where things are a little bit different as well. The 9060 XT gets up to 20 gigabits per second. Still, one of the reasons why I really think this could be one of AMD's best GPUs, at least in terms of price to performance, which is really where I think this will seriously shine, is because, well, remember that when the original 9070 XT was released, one of the biggest things that really set it apart was its price to performance. But if you may have forgotten by now, the original GRE, the first one that AMD ever released, was the 7900 GRE, and that was really well known for price to performance. So when we bring that to RDNA 4, I do believe you can expect something similar, except in comparison to even the 9070 XT. And this is why I think we're looking at 12 gigabytes. It's a pretty decent sweet spot. I mean, obviously, more, especially nowadays, is always better, but it's not eight gigabytes and it should at least do well given the performance that we can expect from this. So that will cost them less than the fact that we are talking less cores, but higher boost clock. This all just really seems to come together, especially because yes, it is less cores, but it's not as anywhere near as the drop of core count that you see with the 9060 XT, but it then has better boost clocks to, like I said, better compensate for that. Basically, this bad boy is seriously gearing up to be potentially one of the absolute best GPUs in terms of price or performance out there. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen RX 9070 GRE? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.